It's okay. week five, and Duke hasn't hit the road yet. That changes this weekend when the Blue Devils go down to Atlanta to take on Georgia Tech at noon on Saturday. Welcome to the Chronicles Sports Blogs video podcast. I'm Ben Cohen. I'm Matthew Iles. And first, Matt, got to get into it. Okay. Triple option offense. Georgia Tech runs it. What is it all about, and how is Duke going to stop it? Well, it's Paul Johnson's uh, trademark. Uh, he was at Navy for the last few years, and uh, you know, with some of the worst recruiting classes in the country, he still was able to bring them to a bowl game with his unique offense. And now he's in a BCS uh, team, and he's shown that it, it can work there too. So uh, really, it's really important that the defense stays on assignment. Um, Georgia Tech has nine touchdowns this year of 20 yards or more. Last year they had 11. And that's the kind of offense that this brings. It's, it's a big play offense because if one guy misses, everyone else is already spread across the field trying to, you know, like I said, be on their assignment. One guy misses, and then they, they got the running back or the quarterback off to the races. So you really got to make sure that you contain, you've you got to stay focused and poised uh, at all times, really. And then you got to make sure that you get the tackle on the first hit. And Georgia Tech has been successful with it uh, so far this year. They're 3-1, which is pretty much a surprise, just like Duke has surprised a lot of people. Um, last weekend, after Duke's win over Virginia, a reporter asked uh, nose guard Clifford Respris what he expected, uh, because let's keep in mind the Blue Devils have seen this type of offense before. They played Navy. Um, they said, what do you expect? It's basically a Navy offense with ACC caliber athletes, and Respris said, a Navy offense with ACC caliber athletes. How did Duke fare the last time it played against a triple option against Navy? Well, um, they held Navy to its lowest uh, rushing output of the season, which granted was still a little over 200 yards. Um, but, uh, you know, that's you got to hold that into account, the fact that Navy's already topped 300 yards twice this year. But the one thing that Duke has had trouble with, both last year when Paul Johnson was with the midshipmen and this year, is that they fall into the trap of falling for the play-action pass. And, um, you know, you, you get suckered in so many times, they run the ball 14, 15 times in a row, and then all of a sudden they pull back and throw it over the top of you. And Navy did that this year. They had 150 yards passing and two touchdowns on only 10 passes. So, um, I mean, it's contain the Georgia Tech offense, but like I said, if you just stay focused and, and you make sure you, you see where the ball is at all times, which is difficult in this offense, then uh, they should be able to do a lot. Let's move to the other side of the ball. When Duke has the ball, uh, Thaddeus Lewis has been great this year. Eron Riley leads the ACC in touchdown path catches, uh, third in the nation in touchdown catches. Um, the offense has really clicked this year. Um, then again, Georgia Tech's defense is one of the best in the ACC. Where's the advantage in this matchup? Can, can Duke's offense move the ball against the Yellow Jacket defense? Well, uh, the last couple games out, Duke has not done very well on the ground, and that's going to be a big part of this game. Georgia Tech has held its opponents to about 150 yards passing um, this season, and you know if Duke if they if they shut down Duke's running game and Duke's forced to go through the air on every play, then it's not going to work out. Hey. So they definitely have to establish a ground game, keep Georgia Tech honest. Keep him, you know, playing. Keep him seven, eight in the box, and that way Thad and Eron can hook up for a couple more touchdowns. Now we don't know yet who Georgia Tech's quarterback is going to be. It's either going to be Nesbitt or it's going to be Shaw. But let's make predictions anyway. First of all, of course, we got to give you a little bit of props. Last weekend, you predicted uh, the Virginia game. You predicted a 31-7 Duke win. Final score 31-3. It's pretty spot on. So what do you got for us this week? Uh, I don't know. This one's I think a little bit more to toss up. Georgia Tech's favored by 14 this week. Um, I don't think it's going to be quite like that. I do think that the Yellow Jackets are going to win now. Um, the first time that this whole year that I'm predicting Duke loses. Um, I think maybe, the, the uh, like you said, the ACC caliber athletes running this difficult offense is, is going to be the difference, I think. So I'm going to go with Georgia Tech 28, Duke 17. Yeah, um, I'm going I'm to stick with you. I'm going to say Georgia Tech is going to win. Um, originally, I slated this as a game that Duke could win. I didn't really know how good Georgia Tech right. was. Um, I think there are games that Duke can win down the road, and I think that they still can make a bowl without winning this game. I do not think they're going to win this game. I think Georgia Tech's offense is going to be good. I think playing on the road for the first time is tough for any team. Um, and I'm going to predict a 31-21 Georgia Tech win. But we've been wrong in the past, and we might be wrong again. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today on the Chronicles Sports Blogs video podcast. We'll see you back on Sunday to recap this game. Take care.